Hey Evan, what is happening? I'm here on USC's campus just taking a little stroll around as I wait for my oil to get changed from my car. I don't have like a lot of time this week to make a video and I actually meant to make one last weekend. So I just thought that it would be easier for me to make this video in all in one take if I can. This is just like what I have this week in terms of what I can provide for an entertaining vlog. I'm breathing a little heavily, I was actually just skateboarding. Um, I thought that I would talk about the little things, the pleasures that I have been enjoying this holiday season and also Halloween season. Because during COVID, there are, there's been a couple seasons. There's been like, I mean, there was like early COVID, summer, and then all of a sudden in September, it became, well, October really, it became Halloween. And then right after Halloween, it was Christmas. You know, when you're in the sea of COVID and it's summer, there's not a whole lot to look forward to. And there's really nothing that like ties together each day or each week or each month. But when it's Halloween season, Sarah and I had a list of movies that we wanted to watch, like Halloween movies, Halloween specials on TV, you know, certain episodes of TV shows that we love. And that was amazing. Like that was like something I could look forward to every day or every other whatever, however many days we could watch. And like themes are just great. Themes in life are great. Themes in movies are great. Everyone loves a good Christmas movie or a good Halloween movie. It, it just like adds texture to the days that maybe isn't there, especially like during COVID where every day feels the same. Now days are different. And so with all of these Christmas movies we've been watching, uh, we've been watching a lot of the like bad ones, like the Netflix, you know, we've been watching The Christmas Chronicles, which is actually pretty good. We've been watching The Princess Switch, The Princess Switch 2, Switched Again, A Christmas Prince, A Christmas Prince The Royal Wedding. Uh, they all have about the same titles. And I'm assuming you may have already seen there's this picture on Facebook that was going around and I'm sure every other platform where it was like they tiled all of these different Christmas movies that all have about the same title, you know, like A Prince for Christmas, A Christmas Prince. Christmas with a prince, like that kind of thing. And it's like every single poster has a woman on the left, I think it's on the left, with a red sweater, white man, mostly brown hair, sometimes white, or sometimes uh, blonde hair, with a red coat, or like a dark red coat. And it's like the same exact movie poster for every movie and they're about the same. And like this kind of genre is actually kind of amazing. And I haven't even watched any of the Hallmark Christmas movies but I kind of want to because they're just great. And this has been talked about to death on, you know, like Jack's Films just did a video recently where he talked about this. So I'll just kind of talk about it briefly, but I love the way these movies have tropes, like specific tropes, specific characters, settings, you know, they all take place in somewhere that like ends in Via, like Aldovia, Genovia. I think that one's actually from Princess Diaries, but you get the idea. And the woman is either from the big city, New York, Chicago, or she's from a small town. And she has to either go to a small town or the big city, which she hates, or she has to go to, you know, a different country like Aldovia, where she'll become royalty. She, her profession, she's either like a baker, a journalist, or like a small business owner of some sort. And she either loves Christmas or hates Christmas. And the male love interest, who's never the main character because it's all, you know, the white woman as the main character. He either hates Christmas or loves Christmas. Sometimes they both love Christmas. Uh, there's also sometimes a small child, like a, you know, nine-year-old, 10-year-old. That's kind of the sweet spot. And the child is very rarely the protagonist, like female protagonist's child, which to me implies, you know, that every female protagonist in these movies are could potentially be virgins. And I think that that's like an important part of this genre is that, you know, this is their first serious relationship. Uh, and, and it's gonna be amazing when, when they finally do the deed with their, with their loved one that they meet and then two weeks later at the end of the movie get engaged to. And so these movies have provided me and Sarah a lot of comfort. I, I mean, I can't speak for Sarah, but I have come to really love them. Uh, we, we, you know, we criticize them, but at the heart of them, they're great. I love Christmas movies so much. And I just wanted to share that you know, it, it's been awesome watching them. And I'm honestly gonna be really sad when Christmas happens and now you can't watch, you know, the Christmas Chronicles 2, you need to wait till next year. So, so yeah, that has been, that's been something I've been really enjoying. Uh, another thing I've been enjoying is 
<laughs> if you go into our YouTube history on the evlog channel or whatever our channel is called, you'll see I've been I've been watching. I guess I'm I've been using this account even though I have my own YouTube account, but I've been using it and I've been searching for like you know, car revving sound effect. You know, window opening, door opening sound effect. Man gasping sound effect. And I kind of love like the culture of YouTube sound effect libraries because all of these videos, you know, you watch them and it's like the first 10 seconds is some sort of like still image with like pretty awesome music for like 10 or 15 seconds. that just like introduces what this channel is or like what these sound, the sound library is. Then they have the sound effect. Sometimes there's, sometimes you get a video and it's 10 seconds of the intro, then the sound for like two seconds and then like 10 seconds of silence. But then other times they have the, you know, like variations. So if you're looking up whoosh sound effect, uh, you'll get like 20 different whooshes, which is pretty nice. And then other times, you know, the whooshes are, the whooshes will repeat. <laughs> I've been watching all these sound effects for a video. It's it's like the little things, the little moments of comfort, the things you can kind of rely on to always be there for you. Uh, that's That's been really nice. So the reason why I'm just kind of like walking around and vlogging, besides that I'm waiting for my oil to get changed, predictably I am like very, or a little bit spread thin. And this has obviously been a very common recurring theme with me. I mean, all through college, like every time I made a video, it would be like, Oh, I have this and this and this and this and this. Even though I'm now working full time, well, I'm only like, you know, six months, seven months out of college, but it's still the same. It's still the same thing. And you can tell I didn't really prepare any of this. I mean, first of all, I always want to stay busy and it's always really nice to have projects. And a lot of times, especially for projects I'm working on, I am like the editor and also like the director of whatever, like Quarantine Crew, my web series that I've probably talked to you about a bunch. You know, Dylan is working on it with me closely, but I'm doing all the editing and stuff. And so that's why projects can kind of pile up because it depends on you to drive the car forward, basically. Um, and so I guess really what I wanted to say is that I'm, I think I have this fear that if I, if I stop having like all of these projects at once, if I stop pulling myself too thin and like having all these weird, crazy deadlines that aren't really achievable for myself, that I won't have, I won't do anything. I won't be doing anything to, to continue like improving and doing film. Like, I mean, ideally I would only have one thing to do at a time or one or two, but I don't know. I guess there's some sort of fear inside of me that if I, if I slow down, I, I will stop and I won't be able to keep going forward. And I think that's stupid, but I guess that kind of fear is something that I, that's me. That's, you know, part of me. So that's that's kind of where I'm at and so I thought that it, it would be easiest for me because I wanted to vlog to just do this do the vlog have it and I hope that it has been somewhat enjoyable I hope that I have been coherent and I hope that I can see you again soon in a vlog and when I come back to do another vlog I hope that maybe I'll have better lighting maybe I won't be shaking the camera all the time maybe I'll have some sort of script I don't know we'll see but regardless, Evan, I'm gonna go pick up my car from Midas. I will talk to you soon. Evan, I love you. Merry Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year. And here's to a better 2021 and a, I mean, a, a good, good vibes for both of us. Since from the future here, Evan, I just wanna say a couple things. Not to be gross here, but if you're on the squatty potty, is your butt at like a slightly higher elevation than normal? Or is it like about at the same, are you like kind of hovering over the seat? I was just thinking that if you're higher up relative to the seat, that there might be like more splashback. Um, but I don't know, maybe there isn't. I also am a big believer of, and, and if you haven't heard about this, I hope this helps you, putting down like a thin layer of toilet paper across the water of the toilet bowl before you go. There's something scientific about how it helps prevent splashback, but it's very effective. Also, how are you doing at your texting three people a day goal? I couldn't help but notice that I don't think I've received any texts from you since that video came out. So um, you must know a lot of people if uh, I'm not on the list. Last thing, you asked me uh, if I feel like I have friends scattered across the country and like that's kind of what being an adult means or feels like, and I think so. I mean, I talk to you semi-frequently over text, phone calls, or these vlogs. 
less frequently than I'd like, but you know, th that's life. But I talk with the others like once in a blue moon, like Howie and I will connect like every three or four months pretty consistently. Kind of same with Kelly, sadly, and then Gabe also like the same. So I am really honestly not doing super hot at, at communicating with people. You know, especially when you're working, you're just doing your job and then you spend time with people that are around you. And that's kind of your day. And on the weekend, you catch up on the things that slip through the cracks during the week. That's all I have to say, Evan. I love you and I'll talk to you soon.